that's very hard. Absolutely. So we're gonna record that that webinar as you as you heard for question. Don't hesitate. We're gonna keep a block at the end of a webinar to to make sure that you you can ask question freely. But as you as we go through our presentation, please uh, please ask your question. There's no there's no problem with that. Um, what else is going on? Yeah, I think that's about uh, all the introduction I wanted to do at this point. Alexander, would you like to share the presentation? Yeah, sure. Let's go with it. You. Yeah, you are. All right. So as you can see, I'm Cédric Le Rouge. I'm the CEO of Alexma. I'm also the executive director of the French American Chamber of Commerce as a volunteer position. And we have Alexandrine. Hello. And Alexandrine is a, is a virtual assistant um, for the French Chamber of Commerce and also for Adexma. So we're gonna go in more detail and we're gonna explain to you how, how does that work and what can you do with the help of an, a virtual assistant. So please go ahead, Alexandrine. I'm going through this. Oh, okay, so I'm not very keen on, on PowerPoint presentation, but I think it's useful for this time. Um, so I'm a virtual assistant, an executive virtual assistant. I will explain later the, the difference. Um, and I've been working with Cedric for two years now, uh, boosting the, the business of Adexma and the French American Chamber of Commerce. So first of all, what is a virtual assistant? Um, uh, if you go to the Google definition, this is the Google definition. Um, most of the people think that it's uh, somebody providing administrative service, okay, for, for a startup or a manager, um, remotely, of course, um, but also basically based on agenda, meetings, uh, administrative stuff. And our definition at Adexma um, is more an entrepreneur helping another entrepreneur. If, of course, it's 100% remote. Um, and the goal of having a virtual assistant is to relieve tasks that are um, essential to the business, but uh, I mean, the, the businessman or the businesswoman uh, doesn't, doesn't have time to do everything and needs somebody to uh, be a partner for the development of, of the business uh, or the activity or the NGO or whatever. Um, so this is our definition and this is how we work together. Um, I'm going to go to the services that can provide a virtual assistant. Uh, specifically, I'm going through executive assistant because I think it is different from uh, a typical VA um, because it is someone that is um, not a specific expert in all the areas of a business, but will be able to manage uh, 360 degrees your company, uh, providing help in any um, uh, need you have throughout your business. Uh, first of all, you will have a personal assistant, which is something particular. Um, many managers like to say, I want to have a PA like the manager of another company he knows. Um, and this is someone that's going to um, uh, manage all, not, not just personal, but uh, you know, your trips, uh, your paperwork, um, your uh, whatever things you have to remember um, and is absolutely needed for uh, going forward to your personal and business um, uh, affair is, is important to have somebody that is going to be your right hand and uh, we're going to have kind of the key of your home uh, to make sure that everything is smooth and the person, the manager has time for the business uh, and for other things he wants to choose but you know uh, being free of time. Um, also the so HR. Yeah, Alexandrine, I may, uh, thank you very much. I may interrupt you just for a few minutes. I, I know that it's, uh, it's a lot of definition and could you maybe explain the audience um, why you, you're going through um, that definition? Uh, in my experience, it seems that people have trouble understanding what a virtual assistant uh, does and maybe confusing with other terminology. Can you, as you go around and explain uh, the different services and help, can you also address the, 
a definition or misconception of, of virtual assistant? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Because what I see, and I've, I've been working uh, for the last five years completely virtually, um, what you have to think about is the virtual executive assistant is like if you have an executive assistant in your office in charge of all the departments and all the areas of your business for you. Basically, this is the difference. And when you go through all the HR processes, strategy, marketing, communication, and business development, it means that you have a partner with you um, pushing through uh, having things done. Uh, it's, it's about having things done smoothly without big effort from the manager and somebody who's going to be able to solve all the problems and take decisions together with a, with a manager. This is my, my definition throughout all these areas. And most of the time, what you're going to do is uh, you're not an expert in, in marketing, then the executive virtual assistant will be able to find out which staff you have to hire or which other freelancers you will have to hire to do the job and follow up. Following up is something very important uh, to help the manager uh, be aware of what's happening in the company or in the business on a daily basis to, to get things done, basically. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Alex. I much appreciate it. I think it really helped uh, getting a better understanding of what, uh, what that is. You're welcome. So when you, when you go to um, uh, thinking about ha hiring a virtual assistant, um, you have to think that a good virtual assistant is going to be adapting to your processes. So if you use a such and such tool or you have your own way to manage your business, um, someone who is working with you has to adapt. And, and it's the best thing you, they can do because you're not going to change your own process from one day to another. But it's true that a good executive virtual assistant will advise you on improvements. And um, uh, this is the basic tools um, digitally that are used by most of the uh, uh, virtual assistants. Uh, first of all, of course, a CRM. It's absolutely necessary uh, to have a good CRM uh, connected with your social media, uh, marketing automation, and so on. And having a knowledge of that as an executive assistant is very basic, I think. Um, also, the communication uh, plan, I mean, everybody has his own processes, okay? This is just an example of, of what uh, I used to work with, some of the tools I used to work with. Slack is a very good um, uh, tool to uh, communicate with your team. Uh, above all, when you have freelancers, it's very nice, um, digitally, and when people work remote. Trello is a uh, project management that is very good. And so. You, the virtual assistant, you will have to give access to the social media uh, profiles so that they can do the, 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 the right uh, communication on your behalf also. And um, Upwork and Fever are good references that not many people know. Um, and these are the two most important platform of freelancers uh, used right now to hire people for short missions. Short or long missions in, in the case of Upwork. And of course, Office and G Drive and whatever is going on uh, new uh, this week, next week or next month, we, we have to be aware of what's happening digitally and the tools that, that can be uh, useful for, for the businesses. Just an example. Um, I see we, uh, excellent. We, I see we have a question from, from Parker. Okay. To what extent can an automated virtual assistant be a benefit and in what expects are can human virtual assistants to those virtual worlds to provide higher quality service? Yes, it's a good question. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, test uh, automated virtual assistant and I think in specific cases of communication is very important um, uh, for research of information and for automated responses, when you have to uh, manage uh, custom management and you want to have, it, it depends on which is your custom base. If you have a um, few companies, you will not need an automated virtual assistant. If you're a small company with few clients and this is B2B, 
maybe an automated virtual assistant is not the best thing to use. Um, but if the company has, it is B2C, of course, they are. They and are and they can work, tool. they can work on combination, right? You can, you can have both, I think. Yes, you know, One is definitely. not exclusive of the other. I think uh, it, you talked about processes. Sorry, I'm jumping into the conversation. But mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's it, what it. we, I think it's what we want for our webinar. Um, uh, and any of our guests uh, today, they can jump into the conversation. I think it's really a combination of the two and see what uh, what suits your business the most and and your and your procedure and your processes. Uh, Charlotte is putting a question on the chat, asking yeah. our audience if we uh, if they have used. Uh, virtual assistant in the past. When we mean a virtual assistant, we mean a human one. <laughs> so it would be good to know if you had experience. And if anybody, as uh, we are a few today, uh, if anybody wants to just, uh, you know, we give you the, the microphone and, and the video and you can discuss with us. Okay. By the way, I think people that are here today uh, are related to uh, uh, artificial, artificial intelligence, right? And virtual assistant, I think. I will discuss that later stage. We will very, okay. uh, we'll be very happy to know what, what you're doing right now. All right, so Alexandre, you wanna go through a few examples? I think the last yeah. one will be, uh, will be my, exa uh, yeah, my example. Yeah, but you'll be. Go ahead. Okay, so he's working with the AI bots. AI bots. Yeah, they're great. Oh, we will see that later. I'm very interesting, interested about your point of view. Um, so these, these are a couple examples of, uh, of entrepreneurs and startups that have been using human virtual assistants. Um, this is a, an American company based in New York, uh, New Jersey, sorry, um, dedicated to PP exploitation from USA to EMEA, uh, Middle East basically. And I mean, I'm not going, going to be uh, um, uh, saying everything that was done for, for this client. Uh, most important thing is that um, this person had a very small company, um, two people, uh, one in New Jersey, one in Middle East, and a very big contract with distributors in Middle East, but needed to grow and organize everything uh, to, to, to keep on growing and, and having the processes clear. Um, it worked and what I would uh, highlight, uh, the most important thing here on this particular client that uh, we created a pricing strategy um, with different uh, cases of, um, depending on the, on the places, on the distributors, on, on, on the countries where the products will be going, uh, we created a full pricing strategy so that the CEO was having a, an easy tool to discuss with distributors and clients. And, uh, and the other point was that a uh, uh, good relationship with the distributors was created uh, with documents of support for them. This, these are the two things that are most important in this particular client. And everything was remote, of course. Um, another client is in Spain, a digital marketing company. Um, uh, the CEO had um, a, a young startup uh, with a lot of experience creating companies and she was fed up with the administrative part. So this is a typical example of someone who wants a VA for just the administrative part and ends using much more than that. Um, in this particular case, the most successful part was everything was clean after she could sleep at night, uh, basically. Uh, she didn't have to be uh, dealing with the um, expert accountant and, and lawyer because the virtual assistant was uh, being the intermediary for the CEO with all these, um, these details. And she could uh, gain a big client uh, three weeks after starting the virtual assistant, which is um, a, a big example of somebody that just, you know, give you the key of, of the company and finally can be able to, um, to, to go, uh, to go and, and get clients, you know, and get business, which is 
most of the time what managers need, right? So we have another question here. Adolf, how many times a VA needs to learn internal process, product target price, and be operational? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. It can be long. Yes, it depends on the, I mean, when you hire a freelancer like that, um, you may hire somebody in full time or just for short missions. What I recommend, I mean, it depends on each company. What personally I recommend, and, and Cedric will have his own opinion, uh, suggestion because he has a lot of experience working with freelancers virtually, right, Cedric? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Um, it can be very quick depending on, you, you have to hire the person depending on his capacity to be a quick learner. This is very important. When you work remote, you have to connect correctly with the manager. Wh whether it is remote or... Uh, or indoor. If you hire an assistant, you have to be on the same page because the person you hire is going to be communicating on your behalf to all the shareholders, to your partners, to your clients, to your employees, whatever. So first of all, uh, find out a way to have a great communication uh, with, with the person. Take your time and the good, the best thing is to uh, launch a short mission to test how okay. the person is reacting, how is the person is communicating, what is in the mindset of the person, and, and go on very short missions, you know, kind of a, a research, um, a, a planning, or um, an event, uh, you know. Um, Cedric, what, what is your opinion about that? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go through after this um, about my experience mm -hmm. about it. I've, I mean, a freelancer is like any other uh, employee. You know, you, no. you need to you need to have a good assessment. Uh, uh, the benefit of having a freelancer in is to you know not having somebody full time um, economically in terms of cash flow and so forth, and give you a lot of flexibility uh, to work with with somebody on specific project. So I think that they you need to find the right person for the job. And as, as Alexander mentioned, starting with small mission uh, specific project and see how that person uh, handle that project that you give it, um, you you can see if it's a right fit. Um, I don't know if we switch to, to my slide, uh, Alexander, but... Um, not yet. I have not yet. one here. I hold on. I just, hold one, on. One, just one and, and I'll okay. and I go on with you. Uh, which is very interesting. So this is it for this one. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, uh, a company, in, I mean, it's in Spain, but this is a very global, like Cedric, a very global uh, manager, um, international trading, you know, typical businessman, um, who needed someone uh, to cover 100%. Personal assistant, executive assistant, intermediary with everybody and and... So that, uh, you know, um, didn't want to uh, take calls anymore, didn't want to write emails anymore, just wanted to have conversation with the partners and the big clients and the rest, somebody to do all the job. Uh, so that you could, uh, you know, focus on, on growing the turnover. Um, so no staff, just a businessman. Uh, 100,000 euros turnover, and I was doing everything solo. And um, this year uh, was a typical uh, crisis year for uh, this company because everything was international trading. Uh, by the way, the person had to come back from uh, Latin America two days prior to uh, having the people, you know, uh, closed at home in Europe. Um, and uh, the company lost uh, all the activity for several months and we pivoted the activity and after five, six months of hard work, um, reached a two million euros turnover so far. So uh, basically it's a, again a trust. Uh, in, in this particular uh, situation is um, 
the most important here, as I was saying to Rodolphe, is the connection with, with the assistant. If the manager and the, and the assistant are on the, same, on the same line and work together well, uh, it's going to be 100% uh, you know, success. And in particular, with this company, the most needed thing is follow-up, follow-up, follow-up what most managers uh, fail in doing because they don't have time to do everything. Sometimes it's just, you know, a follow-up call, another follow-up call to a client, to a provider, uh, to a lawyer. Um, and in this particular case, follow-up uh, is the most important part of the business for the virtual assistant. And now, Cedric, it's your turn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, what I wanted to talk about uh, here is also uh, why why did I take the decision of of hiring a, a virtual assistant? Um, I was in a situation where um, I'm running my own business, my own consulting uh, business. I'm I'm the executive director of a, an association, and um, I get hired full time uh, instead of being a, an independent contractor the client want me to, to work full time for, for them. So now I'm more than maxed out and I, I just, I don't want to let go my business. I don't want to let go of the, the volunteering aspect of the association and I need to provide for, uh, for that new employer. So something's got to give and you know, reading through different things. I came across a book. Uh, it's a bit of a provocation. It's called the four hour work days, uh, for four hour weekday, uh, for, for a full week and you can still get it done. And that really forced me to think about, okay, what else, um, what can I push to a virtual assistant, uh, a freelancer that is, you know, uh, that I can give to somebody and focus on what I'm strong uh, at and really uh, drive an impact about what I'm good at and kind of delegating uh, where I need help and where I spend a lot of time on that that can be done much faster. So I started in the process of finding a, a virtual assistant. I, I realized quickly that there's, um, there's a difference between virtual assistant and executive virtual assistant and the difference is to me in my experience uh, the person that were not executive virtual assistant I had to tell them everything in terms of how to do it when to follow up what to do I mean it was a very step-by-step -step explanation I felt almost spending more time explaining what was this task and how to do it um, but do it myself. So that, that didn't work out for me. And then I switched to executive virtual assistant and it's exactly what it is. They're, those people just, just take it away from you. Uh, you tell them, this is a project I have. Um, I've been pushing it off forever. Can you handle it? They ask you a series of questions and they handle it. They speak on your behalf and they get it done. Um, I had uh, a first virtual assistant, executive virtual assistant that um, ended up being hired full time. So that person didn't stay with me. And as I continue my search, I find, uh, I find Alexander in that uh, we've been working together for, for now two years. So the support to me is, was um, just essential because I have all these different activity um, and as well working with time difference, right, between the US and France. So the beauty with having Alexandre in position in, in Madrid and the same time zone that France is that we can, I can call her in the morning, uh, going to work at 7 a.m. We do a recap for 20 minutes, uh, talk about what need to be done, what type of project has been completed, um, and she runs with it for the day. And when we touch base like that every, every morning. So it really empower you to accelerate what you can produce in one day because you have somebody in the background working for you on your behalf uh, at the level and degree that, that you want. So 
that to me has been really a transformation about how I work and, and what I what I focus in what I focus on. Um, where I think my time is most valuable is to focus on business development and find new contract and, and, and contact. And even there, um, having somebody that can help you prospect, confirm appointments, so you focus on preparing for the meeting that I've been confirmed and get super productive uh, on those prospects uh, has been a game changer. So uh, I wanted to throw my, my testimonial here and By the way, we I've... had a great experience, Cedric, in, in, in a trip in, in France you had, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's uh, right. It's a sport. But <laughs> yeah, I, uh, for a concrete example here was, so I'll go back and forth between US and France when it's possible these days with COVID, not so much. Uh, but last year, I only had a window of, of two, three days uh, in combination with what I was uh, doing full time. So I set a day on the side um, to to talk about to talk to prospect in France. Alexandrine was able to set up appointment, and we did it with the collaboration of a chamber of commerce uh, in a town uh, in Normandy and in Rouen. Um, they allow me to stay uh, for the day, and I had instead of going back and forth, it is close enough to Paris that I had a few people that were willing to come over. Uh, but instead of driving everywhere, people came to me uh, and we could have a face-to-face -face and I had eight appointments in one day. Um, exhausting, uh, yeah. as you can imagine, you go back to back, but super productive and you can't, you can't really replace the face-to-face. -face. I know we're doing our best with, with virtual these days, but um, having that handshake and, and that physical contact um, is is super important uh, in, uh, in the sales process. So that's one example where I really utilize Alexandrine to, to get me um, as much appointment as possible during, during a day. Yeah. yeah. Well, and after, after all this time, right? And, and above all this year, uh, uh, finally, um, the, the uh, service offer changed, right? The yeah, extended. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. as my, if you don't mind switching the slide. Yeah. Um, so I basically transformed the, the, the Adexma business, which was initially very focused on marketing, uh, business analysis. And if you want to go to the next slide. There's a lot now of, of resources um, that I'm able to dig in with the help of Alexandrine and other virtual assistant that can focus on getting in contact with cluster in Europe uh, and in the United States, economic development, investors. Um, you can only imagine that it's impossible to do just by yourself. So having people dedicated to, to grow those networks, that's this is how I was able to, to do it. On the other side, in terms of services, I realized that this is super helpful as an entrepreneur or somebody that is simply in business development. Uh, and you're by yourself. You gotta you gotta grow your your portfolio. You by yourself, and having a little bit of help, having some blocks of let's say ten hours, thirty hours per month. Uh, it's not much. Uh, but it can help you tremendously to, to get rid of a thing that uh, you don't have time for. Uh, so depending on what you're strong at, what I end up doing is um, adding those services, those packages of hours uh, in, in my business. So Alexandrine, maybe you can pick up a few examples here on, on this slide. Yeah, um, some of the services provided by Alexma now is business development internationally uh, and export assistance is, is really great. And as uh, Cedric was saying, having just, you know, sh maybe short mission or long term missions, but some hours um, having good results and uh, working together with the clients to 
for, for an objective, right? So if they need to do prospection on a specific location or on a specific industry globally, uh, we're going to propose them to work for 20 hours, 40 hours, or some hours a month um, and get things done and follow up with them. What is the result? Adapt uh, the, the, the service uh, provided. And, and the thing is that, I mean, we are very focused on international, on global, um, because we've been, uh, I mean, Cedric is in the USA for a long time and, and I've been working for many countries now. Um, and we are able to understand, you know, the culture of different countries throughout the world and able to uh, touch base with many connections globally. And, and this is the, the good thing of, of this. Um, this is also um, uh, connected to uh, the digital side, which is uh, logging into a CRM, um, the contacts that are uh, uh, there, they, they can receive, you know, we, we create uh, marketing automation, email marketing and so on. And another thing is also the events. Uh, webinars, for example, now, uh, but I mean, this is something we've been doing even out of the COVID crisis last year, we had an example of an event that was uh, organized uh, uh, far away uh, in Cleveland and uh, about blockchain and, uh, and, and it was a success. And this is the kind of things we can do, track the audience you need, bring it to your event uh, now uh, virtually, uh, but can be also on the local place and and bring yeah. speakers and audience. Yeah, this, this was an example for the, the French American Chamber of Commerce uh, focused mm -hmm. on the blockchain. And um, so I, I was here for the event and we have a panel um, of speakers talking about the topic. And as I was greeting everybody uh, to the event, we were about 60 uh, in the room everybody was asking me about Alexandra and where she was and said, well, she can't be here. She's in Madrid. And, and everybody <laughs> looked at Virtual. me. Kind of <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, nobody knew um, yeah, until then, but it's, uh, it's, it, it just demonstrate the fact that, um, you know, you don't need to be present locally to really create traction and have an impact on, on an event you organize or, uh, a business development effort you're trying to do. Uh, you can re really leverage um, uh, people around the globe to do that for yes. you or help you. The magic thing of this is that you find really great people wherever they are uh, and, and matching with your business, which is the most important. They can be in India, they can be in South America, they can be in Africa. Mm -hmm. Skill people for exactly what you need. And uh, this is the global market, and it's it's great having people that are professional remote workers. It's not like you know, recently having uh, children at home. It's not the same thing, <laughs> but having you know, uh, professional remote workers is is a great tool. Yeah. Apart from virtual assistant, other freelancers, it's great. So I think, Alexandre, we we reach the end of our presentation. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we. Um, uh, we're going to be adding the few webinar we do uh, to, to our YouTube channel and, and send a link to, uh, to everyone that couldn't participate. Um, but uh, I'm going to now open the, open the floor. Uh, we have a, a few people here. And uh, Alexander, and you, we're still recording. We can stop any time uh, and, and, and answer any question that our yeah, I'm gonna our guest uh, I guess may have and keep it kind of low key if you want to stop the recording and we can just open the conversation. Yes.